Hands-On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products, Inc. Manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. www.elmers.com Stadler Incorporated. Inspiring creativity for more than 150 years. Available wherever fine art and craft supplies are sold. www.stadler.us This season of Hands-On is all about living things. Learn about the animals and plants that share our environment through great projects. We've divided them into the same classifications used by scientists. First, we divide the animal kingdom by whether or not they have a backbone. Then we look at other characteristics like what they eat, where they live, and their body temperature. The groups we'll study are amphibians, birds, fish, mammals, and reptiles. For invertebrates, we'll divide them into insects, arachnids, and crustaceans and mollusks. For plants, we'll talk about the way we see and use plants in everyday life. Every project has five steps and five main ingredients, plus you'll want to keep basic supplies like scissors, markers, toothpicks, and rulers on hand. Remember, be creative, and let's learn about living things. Today's show continues with another common way we see plants every day, fruits and vegetables. Fruits are a part of the plant and the way that flowering plants spread seeds for new plants. Vegetables are actual parts of the plant. They can be the stem or stalk like celery, the leaves like lettuce, roots like carrots, or a bulb like an onion. First, we have a new use for old t-shirts. Learn how to transform them into aprons with a real fruit stamp. Then corn turns into a paintbrush for creating a frame. Next, create jewelry using clay beads that mimic orange slices. Last up, create an overhead look at a farm or garden using beans and seeds. So let's head to the garden. Our first project features apples, and it could be made with all sorts of other vegetables. Take a look at this beautiful, adorable apron, which is made from a t-shirt. Let me show you what you'll need. I'm starting out with some 3D paint pens. I have an old t-shirt or it can be a new uh, cotton t-shirt. I have an apple or I could have celery or other fruits. I have comp compressed sponge, a makeup sponge, and a length of ribbon in whatever color you'd like. Also basic, I have some scotch tape and scissors. So let's get started. First thing we want to do is prepare our t-shirt. I'm going to take my t-shirt and I'm going to cut it off right below the level of the armholes. So I've just taken my scissors and slid it across. Then I'm going to fold over this top piece and I'm going to take my tape, this is an easy way to cut slits, tape it down all the way across, probably about an inch. Then I'm going to go back with my scissors and cut slits. And I'm going to try to keep them as even as possible and I want them to be wide enough so that they're going to fit the size ribbon that I've chosen. And I have about a one inch ribbon so I'm doing these about a little bit more than a half of an inch so that they're going to be bigger, so about three quarters of an inch. Then when I'm done, I'll just remove this tape and I have slits all the way across that to lace my ribbon through. I'm going to take my ribbon, starting at one end, and go over and under into my slits, and this is going to create my waistband. Now, I'm not going to take the time to go all the way across, but you can see what I mean, and then we'll pull that all the way across. So I've got the basics of my apron. Let's move this out of the way. Now we're ready to start sponging our design on. Now, I've chosen an apple, but you could choose any vegetable or fruit that you'd like. The most important thing is that we want to get the excess moisture out of the apple. So I have an adult help. We've sliced the apple in half. Then we're going to lay it on a paper towel. Now, 
at home, you take the time to maybe lay this overnight and really make sure it's nice and dry. What we're actually doing is stamping with fruits and vegetables. Another uh, uh, vegetable you might choose is celery. Same thing, we want to get that excess, excess moisture out. Then I'm going to take my 3D markers and I'm going to go along the edge of my shape. And I'm just drawing a nice fine line. We could do the whole apple or just a piece of the apple, maybe one half. And I'm going to do the star pattern on the inside. Now I'm only going to put like three little stars here though. And I'll show you why in a second. Okay, let's turn our apple down. And let's do a practice one. I've got a practice board here and stamp it down. Lift it straight up. Now I've missed a little bit of the design there. Rather than stamp down again and possibly make a mistake, I'm going to fill that in with my pen. So I'll go back here. And now that I know I've got good placement here, let's do a little bit more. Now I know that that one side seemed to get a little, not quite enough paint. Let's stamp down and we're going to do along the border of the apron. Press that down, lift straight up. We'll go down again and then we'll discover, see if we need more paint. Let's put a little bit more paint on. And we'll just put three on this one. Now any places that I want to fill in anymore, I can go back in and use my paint markers. But it is a stamped image, so they shouldn't be perfect. The next thing I'm going to do is take my yellow and go in and put a starburst effect in the center. And I'm just going to draw that in. You'd wait till each color dries so you don't smear anything. The other thing I might want to do is to put some random dots all over the apron. I'll just put a couple in right now. The other thing that I want to do is to take my compressed sponge. Compressed sponge is this material that starts out flat, but when you put it into water, you see there, it pops right up into a sponge. Now I'm going to take my green paint and I'm going to take my sponge sponge it on get it all into all the edges and then use that to make my leaf now the pattern for the leaf is on the site you can also add a stem And if you take a look here, I've used some other fruits and vegetables. We've tried mushrooms and broccoli, radishes. You can experiment with what might work, carrot or even a green pepper. So let's take a look at our finished apron. This is great for your next baking day. For our next project, we are going to have some fun playing with our food. And we're going to make a fun acrylic frame with a snake on it. For this project, you'll need some, some paints, and we've got ones that have a built-in brush. We also have opaque markers, an assortment of papers to paint on and to put as a background for your frame. I'm using this acrylic frame, and you can use any size. I've also got corn, and that's the food we're going to play with to make the pattern on our paper. I'm also using wooden skewers, tape, and glue for other basic projects or pieces. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to cover our work surface and make sure that it is well protected. I've even gone ahead and taped down the corners of both my paper and my, my back drop paper so that I'm not going to move and get paint anywhere. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ear of corn and pull away all the silk off of it as much as I can. Then I'm going to take these wooden skewers and insert them right into the ends. This is going to give me handles so that I don't have to get my fingers all messy. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to paint the corn. So I'm gonna use the paints with the brush. You can see I'm gonna put a really good thick coat all the way around. The corn won't be edible after this. So if you're planning on a snack, you'll have to replan. 
So all the way around, we want to do a really good thick coat. And if you find that you need more paint as you're going, you can always come back and reapply a bit more. Now the other one I'm going to do, I'm going to put just some dabs of black in it. This is going to give me a little variety as I roll and add a little bit more interest to our picture. And then we're ready to roll. So I'm going to go right onto my paper and push down firmly. And you can see that I'm transferring my pattern right onto the paper. And it's a good thing I protect it underneath there. There we go. After that's all done, you'll want to throw out your corn, set this aside to dry, and then we're going to go to our pattern. And I've used our pattern of the snake to cut out a snake shape of this. So on the pattern, you're going to find an oval shape. And this is to put a picture in and to frame your picture. I've already gone ahead and cut that out, as well as my snake's tongue. And you can see right here, I've traced my pattern. This is my printed paper with my design, nice and dry. Put your snake in place, trace around it, and then we're ready to cut it out. So you want to take your time and do a nice tracing. You could always do another animal on here if you wanted to. Once your snake is fully cut out, it's going to layer on top of your acrylic frame. So we're going to take your photograph, your oval, we're going to attach the tongue onto the snake, make a really fun decorative element. And there we go. I'm going to actually set this aside for a short second and I want to show you some of the other fun patterns that I did with different colors of paint. So you can see instead of a snake on this one, I made a butterfly. You can see how beautiful these are single colors will make a great design or you can mix and blend all different kinds of colors to get a great look with this with your design and your pattern of the corn. Let's have a little look at our finished project. And again, you can see how I've put my brown background paper inside and my picture is on the oval and that goes right into the acrylic frame. And then the completed snake, which I've cut out, is stuck to the outside of the frame. Our next project is Citrus Millifiori. Millifiori is an Italian technique that's age old and today we're going to be making it from clay and doing a caning technique. Here's what you'll need. We need orange clay, translucent clay, and white clay. You also may use some alternate colors. We're using a stretch cord in a very fine one millimeter. We have our clay tools, clay roller, a toothpick. We've cut a blister pack apart to make a clay cutter, or you can use an actual clay cutter. We have some cards, and then we have our scissors. So let's get started. First thing we want to do is protect our work surface. Always when working with clay, we want to lay a layer of wax paper down. The next thing we want to do is condition our clay. We start by conditioning clay using the lightest color first, so I'm starting with my translucent. All conditioning means is that we're going to warm it in our hands so that it's nice and soft and pliable. So the first thing I'm going to do is condition my translucent and I'm going to, trans to condition my orange. I have my orange one here and I've rolled it into a barrel shape. The next thing I want to do is to take my translucent and I'm going to soften that up a little bit more, lay it on my work surface and I want to roll that out to a nice thin layer. Get that one out of the way. This translucent clay is going to give it a very much more realis realistic look to my Millifiori. I'll continue rolling. You could also use a pa pasta machine to do this. A neat trick too if you want to make sure that you have a uniform depth or width on your Millifiori is to lay cards down to the side, an equal number on each side and roll in between and then you'll know that it's exactly the right width. I'm going to put that to the side. I'm going to take this. I'm going to put it about the same. I want it to be about the same width. So I'm going to go through with my cutter, cut along the sides. I'm going to cut a straight edge. Let's roll that down. Let me see so you can see it. And lay it in and roll it around. Now when I get to the end, if there's an overlap, I'm just going to trim that away. And then I'm also going to trim around the edges. I can use my knife or I can use my trimmer. 
Now I've created what's called a bullseye pattern. So I have translucent and then orange in the center. The next step is to take that cane, I'll take this one right here that I've already rolled, I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to put white around the outside edge. This is the basics to my citrus millefiori. Let's get that out of the way. Press that in. I've overlapped a little here. Let's trim that edge. Because I want it to be nice and even. Now, once I've got to that point, what I have is white, translucent, and orange. And I'm going to roll that. Now, the, it's going to continue to get longer and longer. And I want to roll it nice and evenly. So let's go back in. I want to slice those ends off so I can see exactly what my ends look like. And you can see I've got my cane. Now I'm going to continue rolling. Now I'm going to give a little bit of space here. I want to make this nice and long. And I want to roll evenly so that my color stays even all the way along. Keep going all the way down. You can see it's getting thinner and thinner until I get it to a very narrow width about the size of one-eighth of what my finished is going to be like. Then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to pinch this into a triangle. So I'm just pinching so that it comes to a point at the top. And I can go back and shape each piece. I'm going to slice them into equal. I'm going to need eight of these. So I'll do one, pinch that at the top, do a second one, Again, pinch that at the top, and I go all the way across until I have at least eight pieces. You can see here I've got them all, and I've really pinched these nice and tight. I've got eight little triangles, so I have orange, translucent, and white. Now I'm going to put these together got, until I have the center of my citrus slice. Let's continue around. Now you can really see how it's starting to form that orange. You could make a lemon or a lime the same way. Now what you can see is we're left with kind of a hole in the middle. So we want to press that in, but not too tight because we want to, don't want to distort the shape. And we're going to roll it just very, very lightly. I've got one here that's all rolled and slice just like mine and you can see how it's joined together. The last step is, is I want to roll that in orange because I want to put the outside rind of my citrus. Roll that around, slice the end off just like I did before and then I'm going to clean that up and roll one more time. Now you want to let this sit for a while and or chill it in the refrigerator to make sure it's nice and hard. I've got one here. I'll pick my slice slice it right off and I have a perfect millefiori slice. Now once these then they go into the oven to bake, follow the manufacturer's instructions. You can slice them in half. Don't forget if you want to make this into a necklace or as, as in our example, let's take a look at that. We've made some into a necklace by taking our stretch cord. We've also taken our stretch cord and looped it through with beads and it makes a great cell phone dangle or for the end on, on the end of your backpack. For our final project, we are going to use beans and seeds to make a crop picture. The supplies that you'll need are a piece of foam core board. We're also going to use some brush paints, and you can use any variety of dried beans or dried seeds. I've got peas and lima beans that I'm going to use. And for our basic supplies, we need a glue, an X-Acto knife, a pencil, and a ruler. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I very carefully measured out my base for my design to 12 by 12 inches, and then I used an X-Acto knife to carefully cut it. Um, 
we do want parental supervision for this part for younger viewers. Okay, so after you've cut out the size, and you can do this in any size, we're going to go ahead and take our pencil and a ruler, and we're going to draw our crop design pattern. Now, if you look overhead from above in a plane down at crops, they kind of make up these great big squares. And so I'm going to do a variety of squares just by sectioning off my board into different shapes. And you can do anything that you want here, but a little bit of variety makes it a lot more fun. So I'm going to try to stagger my lines and make them different sizes and in different spots so that the lines don't match up exactly. Once I have that done, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start painting. Now this first base coat of paint, um, most of it's going to be hidden by your beans and your seeds after you put everything together. But you do want to have a pretty good coat down anyways because some of it will peek through. So you're going to start with your lightest colors first and put a nice coat of paint on. Now a crop, if you look down from above it, can be any shade under the sun because if a farmer is growing flowers, you can have blues and pinks and purples. Or if the, it's fall, you're going to have yellows and oranges. And of course all the different varieties of green. So I've chosen yellows and browns and red for my picture. Now you can see I kind of went over my line here a little bit, but because I started with my lighter colors first, that's going to be okay. So I'm going to do another yellow one up here. You want to be a little bit careful of those lines if you can, and especially as you come in with your dark colors. You don't really have to let this dry between coats either because we can just keep on going from one color to the next. So there's my second set. And as you can see, this can be a little bit of a messy project, so you're going to want to make sure that you're working on a protected surface as well. And let's do some orange up here. This is so easy with the brush having the paint right attached to it. It's an easy cleanup. I can just screw the lids back on and use the pens again later if I want to. So nice clean strokes. And that does that one. And then maybe some more. Oh, actually I'm going to save one for brown and one for red now. Let's do a great big brown area here. So I'm going to set this aside after you're done painting. I'm just going to move on and show you our next step and let that dry thoroughly because the next step you're going to want to put glue on top of it and you're going to want the glue to stick really strong to it. So a nice dry surface you can see I have here now and we're going to start with our bean design. I'm going to do the brown area first and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill this entire area with glue. And you want to use quite a lot of glue here because the beans are heavy and you want them to stick down. And you can see I'm really putting it on thick. I'm going to start with this top half of the brown area and I'm going to do lima beans first. You can also see that I'm using a clear glue, so all of the spots that are going to shine through from underneath the, the beans are going to be see-through because the, the glue will dry clear. So now, again, if you look from up in a plane down at a crop, often the crops are done in rows. Different farmers do it different ways, and I think it also depends on the crops. So it'd be really fun to research the crops in your areas and see how the farmers grow them. You could even try to match the colors to what's local in your area. So I'm going to do rows of beans for this crop, and then I think, let's just finish this little top area off. And you want to fill it up, and you want to keep this each type of bean kind of separate from the others and that will make your crops look different because usually they don't do two crops side by side. Okay, so you would finish filling this one with lima beans and then we could go over here and do the peas. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this with a smaller seed. For instance, I can fill this all in again and then I can just take a great big handful of these little peas and sprinkle them into place and I'm going to get kind of a random look and fill it all up. Oh, we don't want that one over there. And then as you're doing the edges, if you put it on the dry edge where there's no glue, it'll just roll right over and you can tuck it up so that you get a nice crisp line. Pat those ones down. So you can see how it'd be very easy to fill this space with the little tiny peas. But if you want to get a little bit more fancy, you can also do it in little rows. So if you wanted to do a row, you could go ahead and put just one line like this. And again, take a little handful and then sprinkle them down so that they kind of line up two at a time together because a lot of the crops are done in little rows. 
I think that there's also some fields that are planted in circles or when the farmers mow the crops it looks like a circle. So you would go ahead, keep filling in your design till you get a look that you like. Let's go ahead and have a look at this one and you can see I've done some with the rows. Well, I'm going to take that piece off. This one I just laid everything down as well as this one. These beans I went vertical and these ones I went horizontal. So you can do any variety. Once all your beans are in place, then you're going to go back with your paintbrush and paint over top of them. So you'll just dab down. Again, this is very nice because the paint is right in the brush and you can just dab right down in. You can squeeze out a little bit extra. And one last little tip is make sure that you paint the sides all along here. You can even lift up and paint the foam core all along the edges. Let's look at our final design. Oh, from overhead, this would look exactly like a field of crops. And that's our show featuring fruits and veggies. We have one last plant group for our next program and some fun projects featuring trees and tree byproducts. Next time on Hands On. Projects from today's show plus other ideas are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This is show 1212. Hands On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products, Inc., manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. www.elmers.com Stadler Incorporated, inspiring creativity for more than 150 years. Available wherever fine art and craft supplies are sold. www.stadler.us Hi, I'm Kathy Stahl, host of Hands-On Crafts for Kids. I hope you'll join us each week as we show you craft basics and great projects, each with five steps and five main ingredients. We have a lot of crafting fun in store for you. And remember what we all say at Hands-On Crafts for Kids, there's no right or wrong way, only your way. Be creative, have fun. We hope you'll join us for Hands-On Crafts for Kids. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Hi, I'm Kathy Stull, host of Hands On Crafts for Kids. Our newest series is all about living things. We'll be crafting projects about mammals, amphibians, reptiles, insects, and more. All the projects have five steps and five main ingredients. Join us for Hands On Crafts for Kids and be creative and have fun.